Hey everybody, my expect the comics and I'm back. This time with my top five picks for new comic book day. If you're interested in hearing what my top five picks are, stay tuned for that intro. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get in a timely fashion. Alright, so you're here for my top five picks for New Comic Book Day coming out September 14th, 2022. Alright, so um, I got some pretty good picks. Um, we'll do, let's see, three honorable mentions and uh, we'll get right into it. Alright, so my first honorable mention coming from Vault Comics this week. We got Revealer, issue number one. It is a one-shot. Um, I do like the cover A done by Tim Seeley, basically spinning out of the summer's hit indie horror film, Revealer, these four stories tied directly into the movie. Learn about the characters, the lore, the revealers, adult bookstore, and what awaits on the other side of the biblical apocalypse. So that's your uh, first honorable mention. There were some pretty cool covers, but like I said, I, I do like the... Um, the uh, cover A for that one. Um, going into DC, this week there's no DC books in my top five, so I'm going to give you two honorable mentions for um, your DC fans. Um, it's been a while since we hadn't had a DC book in the top five, but the first one's going to come out with um, written by Mark Wade, and it's going to be Batman and Robin, Batman versus Robin, issue number one. Um, it just didn't really grab my attention to be on the top five list. It's basically spinning out of the events from both Batman, Superman, World's Finest, and Shadow War. Uh, father and son will do battle in one of the single most earth-shattering tales ever told. So uh, that's my first uh, DC title that's on the honorable mention list. The second one is going to be Flash, The Fastest Man Alive, Volume 2, Issue Number 1. Really cool covers, um, written by Kenny Porter, artwork done by Ricardo Lopez Ortiz, and it basically has to do with the um, race through the streets of Central City that lead up into the um, blockbuster film The Flash whenever that movie does come out. So um, I've kind of lost a lot of interest for that because the, the movie keeps on getting pushed back quite a bit. So... Um, you know, if you're interested in it, check it out. But like I said, I, I've lost interest because it keeps on getting pushed back. So uh, on to my top five this week. Top five issue number. Uh, sorry, number five this week <laughs> from Image. Do a power bomb issue number four, written by Daniel Warren Johnson, and artwork done by Daniel Warren Johnson. Um, really cool cover. Cover A by um, Johnson and Mike Spicer. It's been a great, great read. Continue to recommend it every issue that it comes out. So uh, basically, the Knights of Rhine have been training in the ring for years to destroy the evil Necroton, and now they have a chance to do it by winning the Death Life Tournament. Only one problem. Sun and Steel are in their way. So that's number five this week. Um, let's see. Number four. This one's coming from Behemoth, a small publisher, if you're not familiar with them. And uh, one shot called Until My Knuckles Bleed 1. Number one. <laughs> um, written by Victor Santos and artwork by, by Victor Santos. Um, a lot of different covers. You know, choose what you like. I do like the cover A. Basically, Victor Santos, creator of Polar, now a Netflix motion picture. Brings us a new story of crime and capes in the lines of the boys, Watchmen, and Sin City, set in the world of a new hit series until my knuckles bleed. A one deadly shot about a war, violence, consequences, and redemption. Sounds really interesting, and um, that's why I'm making it my number four this week. All right, getting down to my top three, and um, number three is coming from Dark Horse Comics. We got Masquerade, issue number one, written by Kevin Smith, Andy Mecklefresh, art done by John Sprengelmeyer. Um, so this one 
sounded really interesting. I, I do like Kevin Smith when he does put out some uh, some work and talks about Felicia Dance is hiding in plain sight. The provocative social media star and shock TV sensation has one of the most recognizable faces in the world, so she can't capture and kill the butchers who murdered her little brother and experimented on Felicia like a lab rat when she was a child. So, uh, not unless she looks like someone else. So, she's going to be masquerading, as they said in the title, to uh, basically find vengeance against these butchers. Um, there's uh, two covers, one by John Springlemeyer. I do like that. It's a really cool action scene. And I do like also the cover B, which you see her you know, masquerading as a look like an agent. She has a gun there as well, done by Francesco Francavilla. So uh, that's my number three this week. Number two, going into the one and only Marvel book this week. And um, the really anticipated Midnight Suns number one, uh, written by Ethan Sachs. Art by Luigi Zagaria. I do like just a cover A. David Nakayama um, does spotlight a lot of the uh, new team that's going to be on on the Midnight Suns. I did like the Midnight Suns um, series during the 90s. Really fun reads. This one talks about a dark prophecy and apocalyptic new villains with horrifying powers. The likes of which Earth has never faced before. So um, we're going to get... Magic, Wolverine, Blade, Spirit Rider, and Nico Minoru. Um, but what does this new threat have to do with a Sorcerer Supreme's past? And why is Strange Academy student Zoe Laveau number one on the Suns list? So, uh, sounds really interesting. Um, and that's why it's my number two this week. Alright, so we've gotten down to my favorite pick of the week. You know it's going to be highly, highly anticipated. Because it's going to be basically a new universe on the image imprint written by Jeff Lemire and artwork done by Andrea Sorrentino and Dave Stewart. None other than Bone Orchards Mythos, 10,000 Black Feathers, number one. Really lengthy, <laughs> lengthy name. But um, I've been getting really excited for this title ever since I heard that they were going to be doing a separate horror anthology universe with an image and um, Lemire was out of image a while back when they did uh, Gideon Falls which was a fantastic series done by Lemire and Sorrentino so they got them back on contract writing on, on uh, image I'm excited for this they already had um, I believe this was a trade paperback that is like a prelude to this story but um so I'll tell you a little bit about it, and uh, let's see. Yeah, The Passageway. So if you haven't already, read The Passageway. It's a really cool series, and um, kind of leads into this mythos. So Trish and Jackie are best friends and avid gamers, but when the line between reality and their fantasy world is blurred by an evil darkness, can they be the heroes of their own story? 10,000 Black Feathers is the newest entry into the Bone Orchard mythos from Lemire and Sorrentino, this universe will feature self-contained graphic novels. So like I said, the, the Passageway was the first graphic novel. And a limited series about the horrors waiting to be discovered within the Bone Orchard. Um, I'm going to definitely recommend you check out my channel sponsors, Bombardier and Sons. Also has a fantastic store exclusive for this upcoming title. And like I said, my number one this week. All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys uh, found something interesting of my top five picks and honorable mentions that you may want to pick up. If you do, write down in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up. And until next time, Mark Spectre Comics.